After the release of Star Wars in 1977, there were many films made that would hop on the Star Wars bandwagon, and a number of Star Wars rip-offs were made. But the best of these, and more blatant of the rip-offs, was the film Star Crash, which was an obvious cash-in on the success of Star Wars, a fact that director Luigi Cosi would profusely deny saying the design and the script were developed prior to the release of Star Wars. If you watch Star Crash, you can see on all fronts that the director wasn't telling the truth, as there are clearly many scenes in the film blatantly ripping off iconic scenes from Star Wars. From the famous opening shot of the Imperial Cruiser, to even a laser sword fight sequence, which is very similar to the lightsaber battle in Star Wars. In fact, look at the overall premise of Star Crash. Smugglers, Stellar Star and Acton pick up a castaway who is on a secret mission to destroy a superweapon that is designed by the evil Count Zarf. The smugglers later are recruited by the Emperor of the Galaxy to rescue his son who went missing and to destroy the superweapon of Count Zarf. There are obvious similarities in the plot to Star Wars. French producer and screenwriter Nat Waksberger and his son producer Patrick Waksberger had just started an American film company called Film Enterprises. Nat Waksberger, during the 1977 Cannes Film Festival, signed director Luigi Cosi after viewing a sample of his work from his investors. It was believed that Nat asked Cosi to make a space opera just like Star Wars. Cosi had actually never seen Star Wars but had a copy of the film's novelization given to him to read for inspiration in writing the screenplay. After reading it, he would start work with Nat Waksberger on his very own version of the film and started writing a screenplay. Star Crash was born because Star Wars suddenly became a major hit all over the world. So the producer of Star Crash, which had refused to do Star Crash when I first offered him, he was an American man living in Paris, actually. He refused to do Star Crash when I first proposed him the project, but a couple of months later, Star Wars opened in America, and he called me back and said, uh, I want your project, I'll finance it. But the two pictures were quite different, you know. Sure, if uh, Star Wars had not been made, I was not going to do Star Crash because nobody would let me do it. The original working title of the film was The Adventures of Stella Star, but it was decided that Star Crash was a better title as audiences at this time were in love with Outer Space. Cosi was also inspired by the Ray Harryhausen films in his writing and was also interested in adding stop motion animation to the film. He would even add a stop motion dinosaur sequence to the film. Unfortunately, the scene would be deleted. Being me and a Ray Harryhausen fan, I wanted to do a kind of a kind of Ray Harryhausen movie, adventure fantasy movie set in outer space. The kind of movie I always uh, wanted Harryhausen to do, but the kind of movie he never did. So I did it <laughs> my own way. I put in it all the kind of thing I wanted to see on the screen uh, as a viewer. Cosi would conceive Star Crash as a Sinbad goes to space kind of film. In the lead role of the smuggler, Stella Star, they cast Caroline Munro, who had just completed filming of the Bond film, The Spy Who Loved Me. Munro was director Luigi Cosi's first and only choice for the role. Star Crash was Munro's first lead role in a feature film. Munro at this time was in fact married to the producer of Star Crash, Patrick Waksberger. Well, in fact, I play Stella Star. It's a beautiful name. It was a name uh, that my mother, in fact, wanted me to be called. So it's, that is a nice, nice start for me. Uh, Stella Star is obviously a, a fantasy figure, very much fantasy. She wears very strange, exotic costumes. And she's a very strong, uh, confident, with a sense of humor. I th I, yes, strong, confident, sense of humor character. It's, it's a, a great experience for me, this. It's, a, it's my biggest part, and I really 
I'm enjoying it so far. We've only been doing it for two days, but really been enjoying it. Stella's loyal smuggling partner, Acton, has a mystical power that can bring people back to life, but it is never explained where he came from. For the role of Acton, they cast Marjo Gortner. Originally, the character of Acton was going to be an ugly alien, but Gortner refused to wear any heavy makeup for the role. Judd Hamilton was cast as the robot policeman, L, who helps Stella Star and Acton on their mission. A young David Hasselhoff was cast in the role of Prince Simon, the only son of the Emperor. Christopher Plummer was cast as the Emperor, the universe's wise ruler. Plummer said of the part that it was an opportunity to have a holiday in Rome, Italy, where his scenes were shot. Plummer remarked, give me Rome any day. I'll do porno in Rome as long as I can get to Rome. Getting to Rome was the greatest thing that happened in that for me. I think it was only about three days in Rome on that one. It was all shot at once. Plummer was paid 10,000 a day. For the villain, Count Zarfan, they cast character actor Joe Spinell, whose most notable film roles were in the films The Godfather, parts one and two, Rocky and Taxi Driver. Spinell would again co-star with Caroline Munro in the slasher film Maniac in 1980. Robert Tessier, stuntman and part-time actor, was cast as Thor, chief of the Imperial State Police. Nadia Cassini was cast as Karelia, queen of the Amazon women, who was an ally of Count Zaff. Cassini was an American actress, well known in Italian exploitation films throughout the 70s and 80s. Before shooting began, there was a feeling of optimism about the film among the cast and crew, mainly due to space fever hitting cinemas thanks to Star Wars, which was released three months prior. Principal photography on Star Crash began on October the 15th of 1977 at Sincita Studios in Rome, Italy. The film also was shot in Morocco, Tunisia and Hollywood and had a budget of $4 million. During production, David Hasselhoff suffered from food poisoning. During this time, a production assistant was hired to fill in for Hoff for a number of scenes. Hasselhoff had done the majority of his own stunts for the film. On the first day of shooting, he would accidentally knock an Italian stuntman's tooth out. Caroline Munro, like Hasselhoff, did the majority of her own stunts. The fight scenes between Marjo Gortner and Robert Tessier were actually improvised on the spot. Caroline Munro was originally going to wear a provocative leather bikini throughout the film, but American studio executives would insist that Munro wear less sexy clothing in the second half of the film because the film would be broadcast on network television. The special effects and miniatures for Star Crash were created by Italian artists and American developers. Part of their job also included computer photography and mechanical effects. The special effects budget was rather small and it certainly shows watching the film today that they had very little to work with. Star Crash was scheduled to be completed by mid-December of 1977 but shooting would go well over schedule, six months in fact, mainly due to financial difficulties which often put the production on hold. Originally, the film was produced through American International Pictures, but after the studio saw the final cut, they refused to release the film and pulled out of the project. This was where Roger Corman's studio, New World Pictures, would step in and take over production. Producer Corman saw that a market existed for low-budget space operas, and this would influence him to make a string of space opera films. For the score of Star Crash, producer Patrick Waxberger approached Ennio Morricone to compose the score, but he turned it down. Reluctantly, they would approach composer John Barry, who they thought would not work in a film like Star Crash due to its B-grade qualities. However, he would accept the job of composer. Before the film's release, some of the actors, including Caroline Munro, had to be redubbed in English. But due to the tight budget, which prevented them to fly over to the US, their voices were replaced by American actors, one of them being actress Candy Clark. 
who would replace Munro's voice. However, Marjo Gortner, David Hasselhoff, Christopher Plummer, and Joe Spinell's own voices were used for the film. The theatrical trailer was in fact edited by Joe Dante. The trailer would be Dante's last edited trailer for New World Pictures before his career as a successful director. The early promotional film posters for Star Crash had that definite Star Wars feel. The film premiered in Los Angeles in March of 1979. The film grossed almost 500,000 in the US, but would make its money overseas in Europe. The film had minor success in the US, and critics would be less than kind. One critic remarked that the film had a weak screenplay, and remarked that Cosi's direction seemed to have no apparent plan, and special effects seem little more than poor imitations of what's been done before. There was even a sequel released with the title Escape from Galaxy 3, but it also goes by the title Star Crash 2. The film even uses stock footage of the model shots from Star Crash. This horrendous unrelated follow-up is by far the worst film ever produced. Star Crash over the last 40 years has garnered a cult following and is truly one of the best of the Star Wars rip-offs. Yes, it's cheesy, badly acted, but it's just so much fun to watch. My name's Jonathan, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and like what you see on my channel, please subscribe, and if you would like to become a patron on my Patreon, click on the link below.